Hey everyone, how's it going? So, this is going to be an interesting Pokemon to use. Execute is unique. It's the only Grass Psychic Pokemon. And since it's a Psychic Pokemon in Generation 1, it should be pretty good. Although, it's got a lot of stuff holding it back. The most important thing is its move pool. Execute has got to have one of the smallest move pools in all of Generation 1. But there is one thing about it that is astonishing to me. It can only learn one damaging move that is Grass type, Solar Beam. It can't even learn Mega Drain, which is insane. In terms of its stats, when it comes to first form Pokemon, it's okay. It ranks 11th, at least it's tied for 11th with a bunch of other Pokemon. However, it's a little misleading to say that because a lot of its stat total is located in defense, which in a solo run is not super useful. Its special is okay, but it's outside the top 10 and in fact, actually has equal special to coughing, which I do need to do at some point. However, the real reason this Pokemon might be horrendous to use is its starting move pool. Execute doesn't learn any moves until level 25 and doesn't learn another attacking move until level 42. Yes, we will have TMs eventually. Not many as you saw. It's gonna be bad. So you might be wondering, all right, how are we gonna defeat Brock with this horrible move pool? Well, obviously, like we've done in other runs, we are going to battle the bug catchers, the junior trainer, rival 1A, every trainer we can. But let's talk a little bit about these battles because they illustrate a big problem Execute has. The only move we got is Barrage, which is just terrible. Barrage is a base 15 power move that misses 15% of the time. It can also hit between two and five times. If this is the only move we had for Brock, Execute might give Abra a run for its money, but thankfully, there is another move, Hypnosis. And you know what? Instead of just talking abstractly, let me show you the first battle I had with Brock at level 10. Hypnosis hits 60% of the time and puts Brock's Pokemon to sleep. Unfortunately, in Generation 1 only, the game anticipates you using a strategy like this and gives Brock a way to combat it. Brock has five full heals for each of his Pokemon. I have no idea why they did this only for Brock, but it makes Hypnosis very annoying to use. Eventually, you can put Geodude to sleep, and when it's asleep, it obviously can't attack, which is good. Speaking of good, Barrage is actually way better than other attacks, because even though each individual hit of Barrage only does one damage, it has to at least hit twice, and if it hits five times, that's way better than a move like Tackle. I mean, between putting Geodude to sleep and Barrage's multi-hit move status, this is way better than I thought it would be, and we eventually make it to Onyx. Now, Onyx likes to use Bide a lot, and thankfully, as we spam Hypnosis, if it uses Bide, it can't actually do any damage to us. There's also a weird quirk with multi-hit moves that Bide only takes into account the very last attack. Not exactly sure what's going on or why that is, but you can see we are slowly whittling this Onyx's health down. At this point, I'd say it's below 15% HP, but we have a problem. We're running out of Barrage. We also have only one more Hypnosis, and unfortunately we get a first turn wake up from Onyx. That does kind of work out because now we can use Struggle, but Onyx goes for Tackle. We came so close at level 10. Surely we're very close to victory. No, we're not. In order to illustrate why, let's show off some failed battles. I will say getting past Geodude is basically a certainty. And that's a better result than most Pokemon at level 10. But if we skip ahead to Onyx, that's where the trouble starts. And it really boils down to the fact Barrage only has 20 power points. If Barrage had 30 or 40 power points, I could easily win at level 10. The problem is, 
I run out of barrage. Don't forget, it misses 15% of the time. It can hit between two and five times, which is totally random. It can crit, which if it does, every hit's a crit. But what kept happening again and again and again is that I would run out of power points, both for hypnosis and barrage, have to resort to struggle, and all it takes is one tackle by Onyx, and I'm done. Now, this is a part that really kind of stinks because we can't learn any new moves and leveling up doesn't really help us a ton. At the end of the day, Barrage is still gonna do one damage per attack until like level 50 or something, and it's not gonna magically give us more power points. I mean, I know it's just a sample size of one, but I do way worse in this battle at level 11 than my previous two battles at level 10. And while maybe sure that was a bit of a fluke, it looks less like that when you see that I'm doing even worse than I did at level 11 at level 13. So how the heck am I going to get past this Onyx? There's no way I'm going to level all the way up to level 42 and get Solar Beam. So what is the magical new strategy I use in order to make this battle doable? Well, first I level up to level 15, which is annoying because Execute is in the slow level up group. We can complain about that in a second, but you may notice a couple things. First off, I'm not using Hypnosis against Geodude, I'm just going for Barrage. Why? Because at this level, Geodude's tackle is only doing 4 HP of damage, and I have almost 50 HP to start. So that should make it more than likely I get through to Onyx with even more HP than I did back when I used Hypnosis at level 10. So now that we're at the Onyx, I have 20 Hypnosis to use. And Hypnosis is way more useful against Onyx with its Screech and Tackle than Geodude that can just use a 4 damage Tackle. We will run out of Barrage, unfortunately, and so we're gonna need excellent luck to try and hit as many times as possible, get as few misses as possible, but we're gonna need to eventually rely on Struggle. Once I run out of Barrage, I make sure Onyx is asleep, and then I just keep spamming Hypnosis. I have 12 remaining, and Onyx is waking up fairly quickly the first couple times, and we're not missing. Ideally, it lines up perfectly, then on my last Hypnosis, Onyx falls asleep, and the exact opposite happens. It wakes up the first turn I can no longer put it to sleep, of course. But now I just use Struggle, and I have to hope for Bide. It's gotten off a couple screeches, so if it goes for Tackle, I'm doomed. But if it goes for Bide, I think I have enough HP. It's gonna be very close. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be close. But with four HP remaining, we finally make it past Onyx. So at the end of the day, the leveling up did help by giving me more HP and a little bit more defense so that I was able to use all my Hypnosis against Onyx. There is probably a better way to manage those power points, but I am done. This took me almost an hour to do, but as relieved as I am to get past Brock, it doesn't really mean the difficult part of the run is over. We're still stuck with Barrage for the foreseeable future, and as we head to Cerulean City, I had to make a choice, and I figured Misty would be the easier battle. Misty has what's called good AI, so she won't use her water moves, and we can try to put Staryu to sleep and use Barrage. Unlike Brock, Misty does not have potions. She does have X defense, which is annoying, but we can knock out Staryu without taking very much damage. Star Me, however, is a bit of a different story. I try to go for Bide, and I do a lot of damage. Unfortunately, I'm unable to hit with Barrage, and Starmie is able to knock me out before I can get it past half HP. After seven more battles though, I was able to get one that worked out. I put Staryu to sleep, and the X-Defend while it comes early, it's not a big problem. As you might be starting to see, another major point of luck is how long the Pokemon stay asleep for. It can be between zero and seven turns. For Starmie, we get off Bide, and this time it just stays asleep. And because it stays asleep, I'm able to get a ton of damage with Barrage. 
And by the time X-Defend is used, it's too late. We've already won. To be quite honest, it's hard to feel excited about wins like this because they're just so darn luck-based. How long does Starmie stay asleep? How many hits does Barrage get? Do I hit with Barrage at all? There are so many points of luck in every individual battle, it just has made this run a complete slog. And I don't think that Rival 2 is going to be any easier. We already know Pidgeotto has Sand Attack, and we miss enough as is. It goes for Gust, we miss with Hypnosis. Thankfully, it goes for Gust again, and we hit with Hypnosis. Now we just go for Barrage and hope it stays asleep for a while. So far, so good. And critical hit, okay, we knock out Pidgeotto. You know what, we might actually win. As always, Abra can't attack us, so we just move on to Rattata. We get a crit barrage, but unfortunately only two hits. Hyper Fang's unfortunate, but we do knock it out with our next barrage. So we're at just over half HP for Charmander. I'm out speeding, which is good. Unfortunately, Hypnosis misses, Growl hits. We do put it to sleep, but after that growl, it's going to take many, many hits from Barrage. Hopefully, Charmander just stays asleep. So far, it's staying asleep. And I think it woke up too late. It did. We have beaten Rival 2 on our first try, and heck yeah, I'm going to save. Now, even though there's a hiker with an Onix I'm going to need to battle, the truth is it wasn't too difficult. We can skip this portion of the game. The only thing really to mention is because Barrage has so few power points, I need to constantly be going back to the Pokemon Center, and that is wasting a lot of time. And that is also true as we head to the SSN. Normally, I skip the center in Vermilion just buying potions, because then I can dig from the house that gives me the bike voucher and go right back to Cerulean, saving me time. Unfortunately, it would be very difficult to beat Rival 3 and Lieutenant Surge, if I didn't do that. So we're gonna actually have to heal here multiple times. Execute, of course, cannot learn Body Slam, which makes sense. So let's just go and battle Rival 3. The strategy against Pidgeotto is the same as before. We're gonna try to put it to sleep and then just use Barrage. Unfortunately, it wakes up right away, but we can put it back to sleep, hopefully hit with Barrage, and eventually we're probably gonna knock this out. We do. The next Pokemon is Raticate. Unfortunately, we miss with Barrage once. It starts to do a lot of damage, which doesn't really matter because I run out of power points before I even get to Kadabra, which means I either need to use the Ether right next to Bill's house, there is a hidden Ether there, or I need to go back to the Pokemon Center. I try to use the Ether because it's faster, but unfortunately, it doesn't help all that much. Pidgeotto still does about 15 damage before getting off a Sand Attack, now Barrage is going to miss a whole bunch, and I can't really afford to use Hypnosis, it's going to miss way too much. By the time I knock out Raticate, I'm at 30 HP. Kadabra can't do that much to me, but nonetheless, after a Confusion does hit, I'm only at 22 HP for Charmeleon, and it does no Ember, it nearly knocks me out, but all I have left is Bide. Would be useful if I had a lot more HP, but I don't. After 10 more unsuccessful battles, I decide to go battle some trainers. You can see I don't even remember where the trainers are because I never battle trainers in the SSN itself, but it's time to level up a little bit. Hopefully I'll outspeed a few of Rival 3's Pokemon, and at the very least, I'll do a little bit more damage with Barrage, which could be very helpful. All right, so now we're back at level 24. We're gonna try and put Pidgeotto to sleep and hopefully hit with Barrage. Like always, how many times Barrage hits, completely up to luck. But Pidgeotto doesn't wake up, and we level up to level 25. We can use Hypnosis and then set up Reflect. In this generation, the effect is permanent, so that will have all physical damage Execute takes for the rest of this battle. We then get pretty lucky being able to put Raticate to sleep, and getting excellent Barrage luck to knock it out before it wakes up, leaving us at 45 damage for Kadabra. We use Barrage, we get a 2 turn, Confusion does 7 damage, and we knock it out, leaving us with just under half health for Charmeleon. We try and put it to sleep and use Barrage. Thankfully, Charmeleon does stay asleep, and while we do miss a few times at the end, we are able to knock it out with 20 HP to spare. This took a really long time, 
And again, it's all due to the fact that hypnosis, how long the Pokemon stays asleep, whether we hit with Barrage, and whether Barrage does 2-5 to five hits, it's all random. And unfortunately, that's going to continue with everyone's favorite gym leader, Lieutenant B Surge. So, I'm not even going to bother using Hypnosis. I'm going to use Reflect and then just go for Barrage. Surge will probably just go for normal attacks. And although we get a bunch of misses, we are able to knock out Voltorb, but at very few HP. Pikachu gets one quick attack in and a Growl. So that's probably going to result in a loss. I have to put Raichu to sleep. And I'm just going to start using Barrage. It wakes up fairly quickly. Barrage is doing next to nothing after all these growls, but there's no point not just trying to win. It looks like I'm going to run out of Barrage before I have a chance to knock it out. And as it turns out, I do. So, for the first time in I don't know how many videos, I actually lose to Surge. Can the unthinkable happen and I lose twice? Well, after seeing how dangerous Sonic Boom was, I try to put Voltorb to sleep, but I just can't hit with Hypnosis. And eventually, I decide it's better to just reset. So technically, that is another loss to Surge. This is starting to get a little embarrassing. I'm going to put Voltorb to sleep turn one, and hopefully it won't wake up. We get a four turn, a two turn, and then another four turn. We knock out Voltorb with a one hit. Pikachu, I don't even bother with Hypnosis, and get a 5-turn Barrage. I use Bide on Raichu. The first time it hits doesn't do a lot of damage. But as I set up a second Bide, it goes for Thunderbolt, and we knock out Raichu with Bide. Reflect, Barrage, Bide. We have never used Barrage, and the other two moves we've barely used. Say what you will about this run, it has certainly been interesting. And there is one trainer I'm sure many of you are curious about. The famous hiker with the exploding Geodude. How will execute that still must rely on Barrage deal with that issue? The answer? It was actually easy because at level 28, we learn Leech Seed. And you might be wondering why you're looking at a blank screen and no battle. Well, for the first time in this challenge's history, at least since the original Magikarp video, I had a problem with the recording, and I lost a little bit of footage. I considered redoing the whole run, but was convinced to just keep going because we didn't lose any major battles. But because I wanted to show you what this battle kind of looked like, I recreated it in the simulator Pokemon Showdown with accurate stats and everything. The difference being the first Geodude actually crit with self-destruct. So in order to replicate that, I had the second Geodude also use self-destruct to illustrate to you how Execute would survive on quite a lot of health. It's important to note that this simulator does not take into account the 10% badge boost Execute would have, but it's okay, because pretty much what you're seeing against Graveler is the strat. Put it to sleep, set up Reflect just in case it wakes up, use Leech Seed and keep it asleep. The Graveler will attack, but with Reflect and my high defense, it does barely any damage, and while this took a very long time, again, remember, I also had to do this against the second Geodude because in reality it did not use self-destruct. But it was still a first try victory and you do get an accurate representation of what the battle looked like, which I think is good. Now pretty much right after we make it through Rock Tunnel, we can make our way to Celadon, buy the fresh water, head to Saffron and get TM29 from Mr. Psychic. Not only is Psychic a huge upgrade from Barrage, but it's one of the best moves in Generation 1. Unfortunately, I can't show you how easy Giovanni or Rival 4 are, but I can show you this random battle with a cue ball, I need experience points, and, I mean, functionally it works the same way. I use Psychic, one or two hit KO for each and every Pokémon. It was just that easy. I will mention as we head to Fuchsia, I had an unsuccessful battle against Erika. Victory Bell outsped, used Poison Powder and Wrap, which knocked me out. So I'll have to come back when I'm faster than Victory Bell. 
I think for now the play is to battle Koga. Funny enough, I actually think the jugglers are going to be tougher than Koga himself because I don't really have a good move for them. I can use Psychic, and it does decent damage. I might get a 1 in 3 special drop. Truth be told, I probably should have gone the TM for Double Edge. That would have helped out a little bit. But as you're going to see, it didn't really matter. I was still able to defeat all the Pokemon, albeit it was a little bit more annoying and time-consuming than I had hoped for. But with that said, I think Koga is one of the first gym leaders who is going to be fairly easy. I'm going to use Psychic against the first coughing, and it's a 1 at KO, 1 down. I'm a little worried about Muck. It's not a 1 at KO, but X attack is perfect, 2 down. We know the second coughing is going to be another 1 at KO, so all that's left is Weezing. Weezing out speeds, that's not good. Goes for Toxic, that's okay. Psychic does over half. And X attack, we win. Okay, so Weezing and Muck could have attacked me, and this possibly could have taken a few attempts. But overall, this went fairly well. First try victory, not so bad. But now I think things are going to get difficult again. Because I either have to go battle Erica, and I don't think I would feed Victory Bell yet. Or battle everyone's favorite trainer, Rival Fievel. He leads with Pidgeot, and Pidgeot's wing attack does not a lot when it isn't getting a critical hit. If I put it to sleep, it'd be fine, but it gets a critical hit, and I already have to reset. So this is looking great. As it would turn out, that's about as well as the battle would go at this level. I could put Pidgeot to sleep and try to gain some HP back with Leech Seed, but it didn't really make too big a difference. I kept losing HP to Execute because Execute immediately goes for Poison Powder. It's classified as a poison move, which is super effective, and it would slowly whittle away my HP. By the time I got to Gyarados, I just never had enough HP, so I'm going to need to level up a little bit. Thankfully, there's a place where leveling up would be really easy. The Fighting Dojo in Saffron City. Fortunately, I didn't actually go to the Pokemon Center, so I have to fly back there. But the Dojo should be very quick, since it's a bunch of fighting Pokemon and I can one-shot with Psychic. Now, since I need to level up, I have another location I can go to. I might not yet outspeed Erica's Victory Bell, but all the trainers in Erica's gym should be completely a joke. So I can beat each and every one of them. And obviously, since I'm already here, it makes sense just to battle Erica. If I outspeed, I'm pretty sure I win. Do I? I do. So we won. One shot. Tangela is a 2 at KO, but it can't do anything. Vileplume's a 1 at KO. Easy, and we're at level 41. And if this game made any sense, I would be super happy that I finally have a grass move I could use, Mega Drain. But for whatever reason, in Generation 1 only, Execute cannot legitimately learn Mega Drain. It makes zero sense. The only grass Pokemon that cannot learn any grass TMs other than the move it learns via level up, which we will get kind of soon actually. And speaking of that, I level up a little bit more, so I battle Rival Fievel again at level 42. The strategy remains the same for Pidgeot, put it to sleep, and try to knock it out with Psychic. It is now a 2 at KO, and we make it to Execute at 72 HP. For Execute, it's pretty much the same strategy. Unfortunately, it is a 4 hit KO. And luckily, we get a Poison Powder miss, so we are at Gyarados at 72 HP. We do outspeed Gyarados, and so we can put it to sleep. We use Leech Seed to gain a little HP back, and Psychic with Leech Seed is still going to be a 3 at KO. It looked like it might be close, but we actually make it to Alakazam with a net gain in HP. We're going to need to put it to sleep. Alakazam is going to prefer Recover, I think, because I'm a Psychic Pokemon, so it uses that. I do put it to sleep. I set up Leech Seed, and unfortunately, Alakazam wakes up as I go for Solar Beam. Alakazam restores what little HP it lost with Recover, but Solar Beam does over half damage. If I can hit it with one more, I'm going to win. Unfortunately, Alakazam, I guess, predicts what I'm going to do and disables Solar Beam. One in four chance. Disable is completely random. But we're able to hit with Psychic. It just survives. Unfortunately, it does go for Recover, and I need to be careful. I put it back to sleep. 
I need to save my psychics for Charizard. And so I'm just going to spam Leech Seed and Hypnosis. Alakazam wakes up, so we're able to put it right back to sleep. Solar Beam is no longer disabled, and we knock out Alakazam. Charizard outspeeds and goes for Ember. Psychic doesn't quite do half. Charizard wakes up, but I'm able to put it back to sleep. Use Leech Seed, and Solar Beam does like nothing. We have to use a second one, and we finish off Charizard with Solar Beam. My goodness, that is not what we would call an optimal strategy, but hey, it worked. Obviously not a first try victory, but a hilarious ending, so I'm pretty happy. Now, normally I don't bother with the second Giovanni fight, but since you missed the first one, I use Psychic on Nidorino. Kangaskhan is a 2 KO with Psychic, probably would have been one in the other battle. Ryorn's a 1 KO, and instead of Onix, we have Nidoqueen. It's also a 2 KO, but that was fairly easy. And now I gotta make a choice. Do I want to battle Blaine, or do I want to battle Sabrina? I mean, first, I want to go and get the rare candy located on the 10th floor. There's a trainer blocking it, so once I defeat Giovanni, I can get there easily. After thinking about it, I realize Sabrina definitely makes a little bit more sense. I'm not weak to Sabrina's moves, it just might be a little bit of an annoying battle. But I do have Leech Seed and Hypnosis. That should be a bit of a difference maker. She leads with Kadabra. It outspeeds, but misses with Disable. I put it to sleep first turn. I'm gonna set up Solar Beam. It's still asleep. So that means we're guaranteed to hit. Don't forget, Pokemon can't attack the turn they wake up in this game. Using Solar Beam's a little risky, so I go for Psychic, because Kadabra could wake up. It didn't. And we're gonna be able to knock out Kadabra with Psychic. That's one down. Mr. Mime has Double Slap, but I can put it to sleep. Use Leech Seed to gain a little HP back. But realistically, I don't even need to put it to sleep. I'm going to use Solar Beam, and it almost knocks out Mr. Mime in one hit. That's incredible. And we are able to knock it out with Psychic. That is two down. Hopefully, I outspeed Venomoth. I don't, and it hits with Poison Powder. And Psychic does in one shot. That's annoying. It then goes for Leech Life, which is double super effective. Thankfully, low attack, not a strong move. But we're basically at half HP headed to Alakazam, which does no recover. It immediately goes for recover, it does nothing obviously, and I put it to sleep. That's important. I decide to forgo Leech Seed, go for Solar Beam, it stays asleep, and it's only doing about a third. That's not good. I decide to gamble, I go for Solar Beam again. Alakazam isn't waking up, which is good. And we hit, and Alakazam is actually still asleep. It does have to wake up this turn, but hopefully it goes for Psy Wave. I go for Solar Beam. Unfortunately, it does go for Recover, and that's going to be a problem. The Poison is slowly lowering my Execute's HP, and Alakazam continues to stall me out with Recover. Unfortunately, by the time I use Leech Seed, it was a little too late. Leech Seed also won't completely counteract the Poison. Doesn't matter. We lose. And we're going to have to try again. Against Kadabra, we're going to do the same thing as last time. It goes for Recover, which is useless. We put it to sleep. We're going to go for Solar Beam. It's still sleeping. We're going to go for a second Solar Beam. And we knock it out before it even wakes up. So that's one down. Against Mr. Mime, I don't know if it's worth it to put it to sleep because of the 60% accuracy of Hypnosis. I'm just going to go for Solar Beam. Mr. Mime's getting incredible luck with Double Slap, getting a 5 turn and then a crit. So by the time we knock it out, we're at 86, and if you wonder why I didn't just go for Psychic, I didn't think Psychic would knock it out. We know what Venomoth is going to do. It's a 1 in 4 chance it misses. It does not, but we do one shot, so that's kind of nice. This time around, before I even put Alakazam to sleep, it went for Recover. I go for Leech Seed, which will slow down the poison damage. I'm then going to try and put Alakazam to sleep. It keeps recovering. Eventually, I'll put it to sleep, and now I'm just going to go for Solar Beam. You can see I'm losing 2 HP per turn. Unfortunately, Alakazam wakes up, so I'm not able to knock it out with the second Solar Beam. I do need it asleep. The Leech Seed does take away a little bit of health, which might make it a 2-shot. But we need to actually put this thing to sleep. I'm going to try going for Psychic, trying to lower its special. It's a 1 in 3 chance, and I'm just not getting any luck. Slowly but surely, my HP is being lowered, and don't forget... Since poison happens first, 
Once we get down to about 12 HP, we lose. Eventually, we get the Psychic Drop, and that should make Solar Beam a guaranteed 2-hit KO. I do need to put Alakazam to sleep, though, probably. So, I do that. One more Solar Beam might be all it takes. And finally, the Endless Battle versus Alakazam ends. And it ends this time in a victory for Execute. If you're wondering, why don't I just use Double Edge or something? I was worried about deleting any of the moves I had. Psychic, I can't get back, nor can I get back Hypnosis or Leech Seed. Solar Beam, there is a TM, but if I delete it now, and I need to get rid of Double Edge, then it would be gone. So I held off. I still was able to win, albeit at the cost of a little time. But unfortunately for me, while I am happy I've defeated Sabrina, the next gym leader, and actually we almost went in order this time, is going to be the seventh gym leader, Blaine. Blaine leads with Growlithe. I can only go for Psychic, and it doesn't one-shot. Blaine uses Super Potion, though, so we will knock it out before it does anything. Ponyta, however, outspeeds. Blaine went for a useless Super Potion on the first turn. I go for Psychic. He then misses with Fire Spin. That's not looking good, but two down. Blaine then sends out Rapid Ash, which also has Fire Spin. Goes for the useless first turn potion. I put it to sleep. Psychic, it's staying asleep. Is this going to be a two shot? No, but Rapid Ash doesn't wake up, so we've made it all the way to our canine. Thankfully, it goes for Ember. Critical hit is not ideal, and we miss, so we probably lose. Fire Blast hits. Yep, we lost. But I have an idea. I mean, first things first, let me show you how this battle works if Blaine doesn't do the dumbest things possible. Growlithe can attack, but Ponyta, assuming it doesn't miss too much with Fire Spin, can just slowly whittle away my HP. And don't forget, the same thing is true of Rapid Ash. So this just simply is not going to work. What will work versus Blaine is the move Mimic. We do delete Leech Seed. And I'm going to try and put Growlithe to sleep. I'm going to mimic agility. I know it knows it. And I'm going to use it three times. Literally, the only reason I'm using it is because I want extra speed. It is not boosting my special because Blaine has the special boosting badge. With agility, though, we can outspeed. And so long as we hit with Hypnosis, we can put Ponyta to sleep, knock it out with Psychic. We can put Rapid Ash to sleep, knock it out with Psychic. And look at that, we can put our canine to sleep and knock it out with, you guessed it, Psychic. This is another big reason I didn't teach Double Edge versus Sabrina. I wasn't sure what I need my move pool to be going forward. And as it turned out, we needed the move slot Leech Seed was occupying so that we could outspeed. And thankfully, this should be one of the last times I need to use Hypnosis. We are soon going to get Sleep Powder, which is a little bit more accurate. And in order to get that a little bit faster, I'm going to battle all the trainers in Giovanni's gym. For the most part, they use Pokemon with low special or poison Pokemon. So Psychic should one-shot, at the very least two-shot, all the Pokemon in Viridian gym, which will raise my level before I battle Giovanni himself. I still haven't quite hit level 48. We will knock out Rhyhorn in one hit with Psychic. Dugtrio outspeeds and hits with Sand Attack, which is very annoying. And we don't one-shot with Psychic, which is even more annoying. Thankfully, Giovanni goes for a guard spec, but we can miss. Needle Queen's the next Pokemon. We don't miss. We one-shot, and now we level up. We're at level 48, meaning we finally delete Hypnosis. It's been with us from the very beginning, but we're going to erase it for Sleep Powder, which is more accurate, and that is quite good. Nido King, we don't miss, and we're going to one-shot with Psychic. And against Rhydon, it can't really do anything to me. I'm just going to go for Solar Beam. Psychic would definitely be a 2 KO. And look at that. We don't miss a single time, even with the Sand Attack. Giovanni, very, very easy. But that is to be expected. Rival 6, which is coming up, I don't think will be nearly as easy. The biggest problem I foresee as we head toward the rival is that we really only have one decent attacking move in Psychic. 
Solar Beam is powerful, but with two turns it takes to attack, it's almost effectively 60 base power. Since if we use a 60 base power move twice, it's equivalent to one Solar Beam, and we get double the chance for a critical hit since each individual move has a chance for a crit. So it's really not a great move, but that's how awful Execute's move pool is. Funny enough, Mega Drain would actually be worse being only 40 base power, but it would restore HP. But that's enough complaining about the moves we don't have. Let's use the moves we do have and see how Rival 6 goes. All right, against Pidgeot, we're gonna put it to sleep, but this time we're gonna mimic agility like we did against Blaine. This will allow us to outspeed and put every Pokemon to sleep. Pidgeot thankfully wakes up a little bit too late after I hit with the first Psychic, so it is unable to attack and we knock it out. Rhyhorn has terrible special, so we do one shot with Psychic and knock it out. Next comes out the Rivals Execute. We're gonna put it to sleep, and Psychic does about half. Once again, it wakes up, but too late. It did do half, and we knock out the Execute. Now we are gonna level up, but that doesn't matter. Our speed boosts are safe. We put Gyarados to sleep. Psychic's doing about a third. Gyarados stays asleep, and that means, assuming we are doing a third, doesn't matter, it stays asleep anyway, we're gonna knock it out. Now against Alakazam, you already know, we're gonna put it to sleep. This time it wakes up, but we're able to put it right back to sleep. We go for Solar Beam, it stays asleep. Solar Beam hits, not quite doing half. It's still sleeping though, I'm gonna go for Solar Beam. It's still sleeping as I hit with Solar Beam, so one more hit should do the trick. It does wake up, I go for Psychic, it just survives but goes for Reflect instead of Recover, and we knock out Alakazam. Finally, the most dangerous Pokemon, Charizard. Can we put it to sleep? We do. How much does Psychic do? Not quite half, but it stays asleep. And that means we are gonna knock it out with Psychic. First try victory, Rival 6. Let's go. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to battle him again. The reason is that I reset later on thinking I'd already saved, but I didn't. So I had to do this battle again, and unfortunately, I got exceptionally lucky last time. If I'm not mistaken, we hit with seven sleep powders in a row, which is about a 13% chance. And you can imagine if we miss a few of those, especially against Pokemon like Charizard, how the battle can look. After seven more losses, I decided I was just going to level up and use a strategy we have used before in other videos. Some of you hate it, some of you love it. And the explanation, as always, is in the description. Introducing, for the very first time in this run, the Badge Boost Glitch. Now, in reality, as you're going to see, the strategy remains unchanged. We're going to put Pidgeot to sleep, and we're going to mimic agility. I also misclick and use Solar Beam, which is pretty funny. But it shouldn't really matter this time around, because every time we use agility, we gain a little bit of special, and that should help both offensively and defensively. Especially against Alakazam, where Solar Beam should be a 2 a if we choose to use it. Or we can lower its special with Psychic. We do level up before Charizard. That was the big thing I was hoping not to have. Which is, we would maintain those special boosts and withstand a Flamethrower. But, by having enough power points for Psychic, something that was a big problem. We did get by Charizard on our first try. And this time I saved right away. I'm not doing this battle again. The Elite Four might be pretty difficult. I mean, we start off with an Ice type trainer. That's not going to be easy. Why talk about it when we can just battle and see how everything's going to go? First things first, we're going to want to put Dugong to sleep with Sleep Powder, and we do so. We're going to go for Solar Beam. Hopefully it will one shot. Dugong stays asleep, but it's not. Laurely uses a Super Potion. Dugong will wake up as I'm charging the next Solar Beam, but it can't attack, and we knock out the Dugong. We miss with Sleep Powder against Cloyster. Aurora Beam does not knock me out. We do hit with the second Sleep Powder. It is less bulky. We're going to charge up Solar Beam. It does wake up, 
but we knock it out before it attacks. Two down. At this point, I think the battle might be over because we can just, after putting Slowbro to sleep, mimic Amnesia. Slowbro doesn't have any decent move to attack me. Amnesia boosts my special. And with boosting my special, not only will my attacks do more, but if we do get hit, it shouldn't do very much damage to me. All we have to do then is use Solar Beam on Slowbro. I don't know if Psychic will one-shot, but I'm going to use Solar Beam against Jinx. It does wake up, but again, a turn too late. We knock it out, but we miss with Sleep Powder. There's Blizzard, and there we go. We survive. Second Sleep Powder. We thankfully do put Lapras to sleep. It does wake up right away, which is annoying. We put it back to sleep. Charge up Solar Beam. And that's going to 1000% knock out Lapras. Thankfully, it finally cooperates and stays asleep. Minimal issues, I would say, for Laura Lee. I mean, we could see some problems. A little too reliant on Sleep Powder. But I'm pretty happy with that. And what I'm also happy with is Bruno is going to be easy. Psychic is probably going to one-shot everything except for maybe Machamp. I, I think this is going to be a total joke. I mean, Bruno is normally a joke, but I don't think this is going to be an exception. Bruno leads with Onyx. We outspeed in one shot. Now out comes Hitmonchan. Oh, it outspeeds. That's not good at all. And we do one shot. Ice Punch, thankfully, it's a special move. Doesn't do very much. If it froze, we would have lost. We level up. Hitmonlee, for some reason, goes for Jump Kick. Bruno does not have good AI, so it just attacks randomly. And we knock out Hitmonlee. We still outspeed Onyx number two, and we still one-shot. I don't think the crit mattered. I don't think we're going to one-shot Machamp, but it can't really do anything to us. We do outspeed. We hit. It doesn't one-shot, as I predicted. Focus energy is useless. And we're going to make it to Agatha. I don't know how easy Agatha is going to be, though, because Execute isn't fast. We do have a super effective move that is same type, but it is a special move. Agatha's Pokemon have super high special, and if we can't outspeed, it's going to be bad. However, Dream Eater, since we're a Psychic Pokemon, isn't going to do much damage either. So, funny enough, Nightshade might be the most dangerous strategy. I'm kind of curious how this is going to go, and there's only one way to find out. Now, as you can see, we did use all our rare candies, but Gengar outspeeds, goes for Hypnosis, I do get put to sleep, then it goes for Confuse Ray, and then it keeps spamming Dream Eater. Execute is enjoying its snooze. Eventually, Gengar swaps out to Golbat. We do wake up, but remember that confusion? We hit ourselves in confusion. Then Golbat uses Wing Attack. Then to make matters worse, we hit ourselves in confusion again, but Agatha swaps back into Gengar and Psychic hits. It does not one-shot though. It does, however, put Gengar in healing range. Agatha uses a super potion and we knock it out, so that's one down. Golbat can easily knock me out with any attack it chooses. It chooses to go for supersonic, and we don't hit ourselves in confusion. That's two down. If Golbat outsped, Haunter will obviously outspeed. It goes for hypnosis but misses, and unfortunately, there's the hit myself in confusion. Not awful for a first attempt, but. I do want to level up a little bit more. I think I should at the very least outspeed Golbat. That should help with being confused. So leveling up in Victory Road makes a little bit of sense to me. I'm also going to use the rare candies before Laurelie. It just makes sense and I think will make her battle a lot more consistent. The strategy will remain, however, the same. I'm going to try to put both Dugong and Cloyster to sleep and hope they don't wake up before I use Solar Beam. In this battle, that is exactly what happens. Against Slowbro, I don't really need to put it to sleep. I can mimic Amnesia, use it three times, and then make it to Jinx. I do use Psychic against Jinx. And for whatever reason, I don't realize I could just use Psychic against Lapras. I go for Solar Beam, but I do show off how little Blizzard is doing. So that's pretty good. Bruno, I think every single one of Bruno's Pokemon should be an outspeed in one shot. It's all up to Machamp, and as it turns out, it is also an outspeed and a one-shot. So, we make it to Agatha at level 64. The question is, do we actually outspeed any of her Pokemon? 
No, but Gengar misses with hypnosis, or at least I should say we don't outspeed the Gengar. Gengar stays asleep, we use Psychic, but it still isn't a 1 hit KO either. Agatha uses Super Potion, we knock out Gengar number 1 with no damage taken. Next comes out Golbat, we do outspeed and one shot, that's really big, 2 down. Do we outspeed Haunter? No. It hit with Confuse Ray, but I'm able to get off the Sleep Powder, and it hit. Now, I'm a little worried both about my power points and my health, so I'm going to go Mimic Dream Eater. Unfortunately, as Haunter snoozes, I hit myself not once in Confusion, but twice. I anticipated Haunter waking up, which it doesn't, but at least I don't hit myself in Confusion. Even though Haunter was way more likely to wake up, I decide to just go for Mimic and Mimic Dream Eater. Haunter really should wake up, but I decide just to go for it. It doesn't wake up, and we knock it out with Dream Eater, restoring almost all our HP. I misclick against Arbok and use Sleep Powder. Thankfully, I hit, because Psychic would be a 1 at KO. And now, all I have to worry about is the final Gengar, which doesn't have Hypnosis. It does have Confuse Ray, and I miss with Sleep Powder, so I guess that's better than hitting myself in Confusion. It then uses Toxic, which combined with Confuse Ray is bad, and I miss again with Sleep Powder! I decide to just go for Psychic, and of course, now I hit myself in Confusion. Toxic is starting to rack up a little bit more damage. Gengar goes for Dream Eater, which does nothing. We do it with Psychic, it's gonna be a 2 at KO. It goes for Nightshade, and we hit with Psychic, making it to Lance for the very first time. Not bad, not bad at all. Lance could be difficult. I do have a strategy in mind, but there is some luck involved, unfortunately. Nothing much else to say. Let's just see if it works. First things first, we do outspeed and we hit with Sleep Powder. All right, I think we're good. I hit with Psychic. I get the one in three special drop, so it should be a two at KO. I use Psychic again, and it is. I don't think that crit mattered. One down. More importantly, we level up right after Gyarados, and so we can put Dragonair to sleep, or try to. Oh, well, it hit me with Hyper Beam, and you can see it doesn't do that much damage. It does have to recharge now. I do it with Sleep Powder, and I'm going to go Mimic Agility. Dragonair does wake up. I use Agility. It goes for Hyper Beam, which isn't great. Just for safety, I'll put it to sleep. I want to set up two more Agility. Once again, it wakes up super quick. I'm just going to go for the third agility. Unfortunately, it goes for Hyper Beam. I'm at 62 HP, but if all goes well, it shouldn't matter. I go for Psychic. It one-shots. That is two down. I'm going to easily outspeed. Go for Psychic again. Three down. Do we knock out Aerodactyl in one hit, though? I know we're going to outspeed. Do we one-shot? Yes! Although crit may have mattered, I don't know. Anyway, now we're on to Dragonite. Sleep Powder's a 1 in 4 chance to miss. I'm just going to go for Psychic, and it only does about half. Hyper Beam is bad, and oh my gosh. Critical hit, of course, of course. Well, we made it pretty far at this level. Not a bad first attempt. And this could easily have gone a lot better if the first Dragonair would have cooperated. Although, Critical Hit Hyper Beam probably would have knocked me out at full health. Thankfully, it did not take me long to get back to Lance at all. And this time, Gyarados once again falls asleep. Psychic, I don't get the special drop, but I am going to be able to knock it out. I level up. I do get hit by Hyper Beam, but I can mimic agility while Dragonair recharges, put it to sleep, and hopefully get off all three agility before it wakes up. That is exactly what happens. We can knock out Dragonair number one, Dragonair number two, Aerodactyl, we can put Dragonite to sleep if we want, but I'm just going to go for Psychic. And Slam, doesn't matter, no crit, we win. And I don't know if we're going to beat the champion. We did beat Rival 6 on our first try, but that was when Pidgeot had agility to mimic, allowing me to outspeed everything. That's no longer true. Many Pokemon are going to outspeed Execute. I will have to adapt on the fly. But we're already here. Let's see if Execute can have a fairly easy time against the Elite Four and bring it home. All right, there are three moves Pidgeot can use. He used the best mirror move and we put it to sleep. I was scared about Sky Attack, even though that does take a turn to charge up. 
It stays asleep, which is good. Psychic does over half, meaning we will automatically knock out Pidgeot. Doesn't matter whether it wakes up or not. One down. Now we need to put Alakazam to sleep and hopefully it doesn't go for Psychic. It goes for Psy Beam, no confusion, but we don't put it to sleep. It goes for Reflect, that's pretty good, and we do put it to sleep this time. I decide to go for Psychic, try for that special drop, it stays asleep, but we don't get the special drop when Psychic hits. I then decide to go for Solar Beam, but Alakazam will wake up, that means it will have a chance to attack me, it goes for Recover, restoring its HP. Solar Beam is doing over half, I'm actually over leveled now, so that makes sense. I'm going to try to put it to sleep. There's Psychic, and no! The special drop. All right, that's GG, I think. We do put it to sleep. I'm just going to go for Psychic. I don't think Solar Beam knocks it out. I do lower Alakazam special. I guess now it makes sense to go for Solar Beam. Alakazam stays asleep. That means Solar Beam is going to hit. It is going to knock it out. Two down, but at 33% less special. Ah, oh, that's not good. Well, I can just go and put Ride on to sleep, which I do. Not that it really matters. Even with the special drop, Solar Beam is going to knock it out. Ride on doesn't wake up. That's three down. We level up. We outspeed Executor. Use Sleep Powder, but it's going to be very difficult to knock this thing out. Executor has great special, which will be good when we eventually use it. I go for Psychic, and that does, oh, critical hit and a special drop, but it's going to say that did decent damage, but it's because I got a crit. I go for Psychic again, and even with the special drop, you can see how much less that did. We do get another special drop though, which is pretty good, and Executor is still snoozing. I go for Psychic again, Executor is still asleep. I'm a little worried about it waking up. I'm going to go for Psychic, and no! Full Restore! Okay, we have a problem. I didn't realize Executor is now awake. I go for Psychic, we get another special drop. It goes for Barrage, which of course hits a bunch, but not a big deal. Thankfully, I'm able to put Executor back to sleep. I go for Psychic, and if I use Solar Beam, it's going to knock it out. I go for Solar Beam. Executor does wake up, but since I outspeed, that's not actually a big deal. And we do hit, but we don't knock it out, and that's what I was worried about. It goes for Barrage. Maybe it won't go for Hypnosis because the Psychic move. That's what I'm concerned about. I could knock it out with Psychic, but I'm running out of Power Points, so I'm going to put it to sleep. I'm going to set up Solar Beam, and I thankfully knock out Executor. Maybe I use Psychic a little too much there. Power points are going to become an issue. We really need to put Gyarados to sleep first turn. We do. I'm going to try and set up Solar Beam. Gyarados stays asleep. Here's Solar Beam. Wow, that did nothing. That did nothing. I'm going to have to use it again. Gyarados stays asleep. It's a four hit KO with Solar Beam. That's terrible Gyarados does wake up I thankfully put it right back to sleep I'm gonna go for solar beam again this probably won't knock it out Gyarados is still snoozing we hit we don't knock it out Gyarados wakes up and I just thought of something I'm gonna try put it back to sleep we do and I'm gonna use mimic now what move could I use from Gyarados that might be helpful in this battle I don't know maybe hydro pump the champion goes for full restore, which does really suck, so Gyarados is back at full HP. Thankfully, once again, we're able to put it to sleep, and we can actually start going for Psychic now that I have Hydro Pump to use against Charizard. I go for Psychic, no special drop, Gyarados is still sleeping. I go for Psychic again, still no special drop, still sleeping. I go for a third Psychic, still no special drop, still sleeping. Please knock this out. No, but it is still sleeping. I'm out of psychics. I need to go for solar beam. Gyarados wakes up, but it's not a big deal. We will knock it out. And all that's left is Charizard. I don't think Hydro Pump will one shot because of the special drop. So I'm going to try to put it to sleep. Come on, sleep powder, please. Oh, wait. Uh oh. Yeah, I didn't see that coming for some reason. It outspeeds me. That makes sense. Um, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. We might have to level up some more, maybe. I mean, even with the special drop, that last battle went about as well as I could possibly have hoped. We hit, like, every sleep powder. 
We got pretty decent luck all in all. Do we need to level up? If there was only a way I could outspeed the Charizard at the level I'm at. There is another rare candy I did pick up in the power plant. I did get it off camera, but that's not a big deal. You can see I'm finally using Psychic against Lapras, which is pretty good. But I, I just don't know what to do here. I mean, we need to outspeed Charizard or what? We hope for the 20% chance miss between its moves. I mean, Fire Spin's 25%, Fire Blast is 15%, so I averaged it out. I don't know. It's not good, guys. Bruno's easy. And even Agatha, I've yet to lose to Agatha this entire battle because realistically, the way I lose to Agatha is through Dream Eater Hypnosis. And now that Dream Eater is no longer a problem, even when I get put to sleep, which doesn't happen in this battle yet, it's easy. I mean, I've swept through her entire team and this Gengar actually can't put me to sleep. Nightshade is scary, but I'm still through with 66 HP. And Lance, we've seen, isn't too bad. I probably should try to put the Dragonite to sleep because I get two opportunities. But I don't know. I think this should be fine. I do put Gyarados to sleep not once but twice. I get the special drop and as we see, it's actually not a two shot. But what does it matter? We made it to Dragonair. We mimic all the agilities. I even get hit with Hyper Beam. It doesn't really matter. And we can just use Psychic and sweep through until Dragonite. What? Oh. Okay, maybe we can't. Aerodactyl actually can survive? Alright, well, that was annoying, but at least we'll knock out Dragonite after it hits with Hyper Beam. It's not gonna... Are you serious? <laughs> so a range and a crit. Great game. And in case you thought it wasn't a range I'd hit often, the very next attempt I make it back to Lance, and the same thing happens. This time Aerodactyl goes for Hyper Beam instead of Supersonic. It has a super high chance of critting. Thankfully, it didn't, so we knock it out. And this time, I'm going to go for the smarter strategy, even though Sleep Powder has a higher chance to miss. There at least is a 75% chance Lance doesn't attack me versus a 100% chance and he keeps getting crits. I don't know. Who cares? We've made it back to the champ. Maybe without the special drop, I can survive a fire attack and or get a miss. Let's just try it. Just like last time, Pidgeot goes for Mirror Move, which does nothing. I go for Sleep Powder and hit. It doesn't wake up as I use Psychic, so I'm able to knock it out. This time, Alakazam starts with Reflect, and we do put it to sleep right away. Unfortunately, it does wake up, so it's going to get a turn to attack me. I'm charging up Solar Beam. It goes for Reflect again, which does nothing. I hit with Solar Beam. It triples up on Reflect, so we're going to put it back to sleep. Please just stay asleep. It does. So we're going to be able to hit with Solar Beam. That's two down. And more importantly, no special drop. Now, here's where I made a realization, but a little too late. Rhydon knows Tail Whip and Leer. If it uses a couple of those, I probably will outspeed Charizard. Unfortunately, Solar Beam will knock it out. Psychic will probably one shot, but Sleep Powder can miss. So I try to get a Sleep Powder miss, and I just can't seem to do that. That gave me an idea that in case I lose, I can come back and definitely, well, not definitely, but probably win, or at least gain some speed. But for now, we've knocked out Rhydon, no speed gained, three down. We're gonna put Executor to sleep with Sleep Powder. Psychic does nothing, so special drop, no special drop, we're just doing nothing. We use it again, still no special drop on Executor, it's still asleep. Finally, we get a special drop after the third Psychic and it's still asleep. I'm running out of power points, so I go for Solar Beam and it stays asleep. I hit with Solar Beam, doesn't quite knock it out, but it is still asleep. Because of that, I can go for Solar Beam, it wakes up, but it's too late. We knock it out, four down. Please put Gyarados to sleep, we do. I'm gonna use Psychic, it does about a third. I'm going to use Psychic again, one more hit, and since it stayed asleep, we're guaranteed to knock it out. And we've made it to Charizard. All we need is for... Wait a minute. I didn't mimic Hydro Pump. Oh my goodness. How could I do that? I'm going to go for Sleep Powder. It hits with Fire Spin. Two, three, four, and then Fire Blast hits. Well, I guess it didn't matter, but I just thought of something. 
I thought of something. There is a way better strategy. It's going to require some backtracking to the rocket hideout. Need to go to the third floor basement, defeat this guy. And you know what? Might as well just show the champion battle because nothing different is happening than the other battles. This time Pidgeot goes for wing attack. Are you kidding me? You just mirror move sleep powder? Come on. Are you kidding me? Well, I guess I wasn't able to show off my better strategy. It took me a couple attempts to make it back, but let me show you what I was thinking. So this time, mirror move fails. It falls asleep. It wakes up, so it's going to get an opportunity to attack me, but it charges up a sky attack and we knock it out. Now, Alkazam uses Psybeam and we're going to put it to sleep. Now, we're going to go for Mimic and Mimic Recover, if you can believe it. Unfortunately, Alakazam wakes up, but that shouldn't be a big issue. It uses Recover, which I just mimicked, and I put it back to sleep. Now you might notice Solar Beam is gone. The reason we went back to the game corner was to get Double Edge, which does over half, but it does deal recoil damage, hence my need for Recover. Alakazam cooperates and stays asleep, and I'm able to knock it out, but wait, it gets better. Against Rhydon, I'm just going to use Recover. It uses Leer. I'm going to go for Double Edge. It goes for Fury Attack. I Recover. It goes for Tail Whip. And now I have a choice. I will outspeed Charizard. But do I want to knock out Rhydon? Or do I want one more to be safe? I decide to go for Sleep Powder. I hit. And so that's a sign. It's just time to move forward. We knock it out. Three down. I should also note I used a rare candy before this battle, so I will not level up in the middle. Now out comes Executor. We do hit first turn with the Sleep Powder. Even though Execute doesn't have great attack, Double Edge is doing pretty decent damage. Should be a 4 KO as Executor continues to slumber. I'm going to go for Psychic, hoping I don't put it in healing range. And, well, I got a crit, so it actually did, but Executor doesn't heal. You know what? If it's going to stay asleep, I might as well heal. I go for recover, it wakes up, but too late. Two Pokemon left. I need to put Gyarados to sleep, and I do. I go for Psychic, you can see it's doing more damage, but not quite half, and it stays asleep. I go for Psychic again, it's special drop, it wakes up, but it doesn't matter. It's all down to this. Can we hit Sleep Powder and win? Come on, yes! I think we won! If this does half damage, we won. I go for Psychic. It does half damage. Charizard's still asleep. We knock it out with Psychic. We win. Let's go. The double edge recover strategy worked to perfection. What an interesting run. Bide, Barrage, double edge recover. Tons of weird stuff going on. Solar Beam, for goodness sake. Interesting, interesting, interesting run. And it's the first run that has a real disconnect. We are at level 66 as we won. But this took almost eight and a half hours. If we look at our tier list, where do we put this? The 830 time would put it in the same tier as Zubat, one of the worst Pokemon. But level 66 to this point puts it in the top five in terms of lowest level. This was a hard decision, but at the end of the day, I think the level mattered more than the time due to Barrage, Brock, and all the garbage RNG we needed in the first half of the game. That contributed to a lot of that 8-hour, 26-minute time. And so I'm going to put it just below Slowpoke and just above Bulbasaur. It was a far easier Elite Four, which is more important. And, I mean... Who can dispute top five in terms of level? That is not something that was easy to do. And as you can tell by the fact we didn't show the Elite Four that often, beating the first four members was extremely trivial by the end. This video has been a little longer than I anticipated, so I'm going to go. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.